everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel Pookie Pitch. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most thrilling musical scores in Pokemon games. Pokemon games rely on their music in a very big way. It's not very often when there's no music going on in a Pokemon game. And when that happens, you know something's going down. So whenever you hear music in the background in a Pokemon game, it tries to reflect what's happening on the screen. Whether you're just wandering through a route, trying to catch wild Pokemon, or battling against an evil team's leader. Either way, the music is always reflective and is always emotive. So I thought I would bring to you guys my personal favourite top 10 musical scores in Pokemon games. Some of these are nostalgic, some of these are purely just thought provoking, but either way, they're quite interesting and I love every single one of these 10. So without further skidoo, let's get into it. Number 10, Paniola Town in the daytime. This theme is unlike usual Pokemon themes in the fact that it sounds very Western. As you can see by the artwork of the town itself, it does have a Western theme to it, hence where this comes from. And I just love the fact that it's slightly out of place but still fits in, if that makes any sense. It's very jovial, it really gets you happy, it really gets you moving, it makes you want to play the game. And well, enough talking, let's have a listen to it. Number 9, Lavender Town. The Lavender Town music is very memorable and very iconic within the Pokemon universe. It's used when the ghost types are first introduced in the first game, and it really does get that sense of ooh, haunting. There was of course that rumour that some people had committed suicide after hearing this song, but of course this is absolute BS. None of that happened. It's just a creepy and emotive song, and I don't need to describe it anymore, you guys know what it is, but still, let's have a listen. Number 8, the Generation 2 End Credits. This for me personally is just a nostalgic sense of achievement. You've just beaten Lance's three Dragonites, it's taken you about 15 attempts but you finally did it and you get this glorious victorious music afterwards. When you hear this music you know you've got a whole nother region to explore in the best post game that has ever been in a Pokemon game. Once you finish this Elite Four the Johto map is over for you and you move over to Kanto, a whole nother eight gyms. This is the only core series game so far where you visited another region. And just by hearing that end credit music, you know you have achieved everything you can do in Johto, yet you've still got eight gyms to come in Kanto. Let's have a listen. Number 7, Generation 4's intro music and Rowan's Lab. This is the first introduction musical score on this list, and boy is it a good one. This was the first thing most people would have heard when they started on the DS generation of the games in Generation 4, and wow. It really does get those emotions flowing, it really does get the feeling out there that you've got a game coming, and it's just amazing really. It's subtle, it's mellow, and it gets you right in the mood to get on with the game. Considering this was a new generation on a new console on the DS, it really did captivate the mood of an entire generation and made people want to go out there, get on with the game, catch whatever they could, and just, you know, become the champion of the Sinnoh region. Let's have a listen. Number 6, the red and blue introduction music. I really do not think I need to give you any description on this. This is the first song most people would have heard in Generation 1 all those years ago. It's not just the musical score that defined a generation in Pokemon or defined a game, it's the musical score that defined a generation of children all around the planet. I really don't think I need to say any more on this one, you all know what it sounds like, but let's hear it again. Number 
Number 5. Unwavering Emotions The name of the track says it all on this one. It's used in the black and white games where Bianca goes off on a journey without her father's approval and, at some point, his father catches up to Bianca to come and take her home. Yet, she doesn't want to. She pleads with her father to let her stay and to let her carry on exploring the Unova region. It really does bring a personal and human touch to Pokemon and it makes you feel a hell of a lot more than you have done in other games. Take a listen. Number 4. Hoenn Route 204 This one is just pure nostalgia for me. Whenever I hear this tune, I am already running through the grass, running into wild wingo that I don't want to, yet I'm trying to get through, I can see it vividly, I'm trying to get from Petalburg City up to Petalburg Woods. Don't even know if that's the right route for it, but that's what I see. And a musical score in a game that can do something like that to someone is always going to be well adored. For some reason I can always see my Blaziken out there with its blaze kick just absolutely demolishing the opposition, fighting my way through anyone I could. I think of all this just by hearing this track. So let's listen to it again while I go back in time. Number 3, An Eternal Prison. This is such a beautiful piece of music, and it would be regarded as such whether it was in a Pokemon game or composed by a, an orchestra, it does not matter. This is absolutely stunning. It's taken me all the way to here to actually mention a Generation 6 score, but I finally have. It's used as a backing track when AZ describes the Great Pokemon War, a war which took many Pokemon's lives. In doing so, the ultimate weapon was created, hopefully trying to get back AZ's Floet, but it just didn't work. Not very often in a cutscene in a Pokemon game do I pay 100% attention, yet for this one, just because of the music alone, I was drawn in the first time I heard it. It really did get my attention, I really did just focus on what was happening with the cutscene and just wow. Let's have a listen. Number 2. Generation 4's Route 201 This could easily have been Generation 4's Route 209, which a lot of people love, but to me that sounds too much like all the young dudes. Let's have a quick listen of that one. You see what I mean? So, for my number 2 is the Generation 4's Route 201. Generation 4 is what I've got the least affiliation with, yet for some reason, this route is... Oh, just wow! This really does give you the sense of travelling through a route trying to find wild Pokemon. It's the first route you come across and you go up there with the arrival, who I always call Barry, and you go around up into the um, Lake Verity, I think it is, and just hearing that music is... Wow, it really does make you, again, want to play a game, almost like the uh, Rowan's Lab song. In my opinion, this is the best root music, and if you were going to imagine Pokemon root music, it would be this. So, enough of me talking, let's just hear it. And number one, welcome to Chaos. Of course it was going to be a Kalos based song, what else would it have been? My favourite generation is Generation 6 and it is partly because of the music. Just a bit of background story for you in case you didn't know, um, one of my first paychecks in my first full time job was used to buy a 3DS and Pokemon Y uh, as a bundle, brand new, not second hand anything, and that arrived, I don't know, on one day and 24 hours later I was you know, in a lot of pain in my chest and I ended up being admitted to hospital with a very minor heart lining issue. 
But either way, I took the 3DS and Pokemon Y with me because I thought to myself, I'll try and get through the generations, you know, because after Generation 3, um, I became a teenager and I ducked out of 4, 5 and 6 because I thought, you know, Oh, Pokemon's for kids, I want to go play football with my friends and hang around the chip shop and talk about boobs and stuff. You know, so eventually at the age of 24, when I grew up, I did dip into the Pokemon world again and I did that with Pokemon Y. And in that five day stay in hospital that I had, I was fasted, I had no food, but I had this 3DS and I had Pokemon Y. And I do not lie to you here when I say that I did not put it down. And that was mainly helped by the intro music, the welcome to Kalos, the first thing you see after you've set up your game. That shadow Pokeball coming down and landing in Sycamore's hand and the music, the string coming in, oh, I can't describe just how good it was. I will always associate Generation 6 with my introduction back into the Pokemon world and that is helped by the fact that this song kicked it off. So enough of me, let's listen to this song to see us out. Thank you for watching the game. for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed this video, why not leave a like or a comment down below? Believe me, both are really appreciated. And of course, if you've seen this video and you want to see more from me, click that subscribe button. Why not even ring the bell? Get notified the second I upload a video. But until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>